What's up folks, my name is Sir Medieval and welcome back to some Ascent Infinite Realm. Today we'll be jumping into one of the most intricate systems in the game and a big part of the gathering slash crafting system, the housing. So to start with, the housing system in Ascent Infinite Realm works in two different ways. When you start the game and start going through the storyline, you actually get an instance house for free. This one works in a lot of the same ways that the open one does, aside from a couple differences in terms of hiring NPCs and getting the open world house bonus for having one in the world. One thing to note before we get started on the open world side of things is that you do not need to have a premium membership to have one of these houses. There's some confusion going around thinking that you need it because the houses are called premium houses, but as you can see here, all it takes is simply walking up to a housing board and spending in-game currency, aka gold, to obtain it. You'll also be paying rent on the house too, in which for the base open world houses cost about 10k gold for each pay cycle. When you first obtain your house, the first thing you can start doing is placing down workshops and gathering nodes, which also go by production facilities. You can place down mines for ore, farms, arboretums, chicken coops, automaton workshops which are for growing combat pets, and magic devices for housing bonuses such as crafting. After you get started with that, you'll be able to start placing down workshops as well. For workshops, we have weapon benches, armor benches, alchemy benches, cooking ovens, furniture benches, as well as storage units. As soon as you get a house by this time, you'll more than likely have a pretty full inventory. For this, I would highly recommend building the storage unit as soon as possible. It's going to make things a lot less annoying, believe me. To build this, all you'll need is about a thousand gold in the storage utility item, and some of you may have been wondering on how to actually get this item, and it's actually pretty easy. So you can of course get it from the resident token trader out front where your NPCs are, but you can also go to the level 30 starting town and get it from there too. Several of the token vendors actually have this, including the world quest vendor and the reconstruction one. So if you've already done a few world quests, just head on over and pick it up and boom, you've got yourself a storage unit. These also can be expanded and it's pretty easy to upgrade as well, but we'll get to that in a second here. Your house starts out at level 1, which means you only have access to the most baseline of gathering nodes and crafting benches. If you'd like to get access to the higher tiers, you need to start upgrading your house. You also need to do this to begin building the automaton workshop. To do this, click on the production facility button and click the estate menu at the top. It will ask you to spend things like gold and earth essences to upgrade it successfully. The earth essences are hard to understand what to obtain from at first, but you actually can get these from gathering from your nodes. So if you're able to place the maximum amount of nodes as soon as you get your home and wait for them to grow, you'll be able to upgrade your estate at least by the time you've harvested all of those. You should be able to set up at least 10 or less gathering nodes upon having a level 1 house, and to get the seeds to plant those like mineable ore, chickens for harvesting, or trees to cut, you need to physically go out into the open world and gather for the nodes themselves. For instance, gathering from a few mining nodes will give you ore seeds to plant in your house mines, and when you get into the higher tiers it's the same thing as well. After about an hour and a half, they'll be ready for harvesting, and that's when you can get the earth essences as well as the material itself. One tip to mention here is that the more you wait before harvesting the node, the more you gain. There's also uncommon seeds that you can obtain to get you more rare items as well. And if you happen to get the quest Touch of Consideration quest, be sure to note that the translation is actually off on that. Translation-wise, it'll say something along the lines of harvesting someone else's fish at their estate. This is a massive translation error. What it's actually asking you to do is to go to someone's house that has their estate gathering nodes set to public and to take care of them, quote-unquote which looks like it may actually increase the harvest that the original person does get, like we talked about before. But what matters is that it completes the quest for you, so if you have a next door neighbor that has their node set to public, that's exactly what you're looking for. Moving on to the workbenches, of course most of them are self-explanatory. The armor bench crafts armor, and allows you to refine certain materials, same with the weapon bench. Alchemy allows you to craft potions alongside magic crystals that you'd want to use for the magic device tool we talked about as well, which does have bonuses for you like crafting weapon bonuses that you can apply for yourself. The weapon and armor benches also have the ability to craft enhancement materials as well. This depends on what magic crystal you feed the device to, so make sure to look at it before you do anything, in terms of the crafting bonus. The English pass that's available does help with this as well. Also, this is a good spot to mention that you actually do get a bonus for owning the house in the open world. Whatever zone the house is in, you do get bonuses to experience gain and combat item drop rate, as well as gathering bonuses and earth essence increases from your harvesting nodes. You can also get more production facility space and can assign other residents to your home too, and merchants for selling items. There's also a couple other bonuses too. The cooking bench is also pretty much self-explanatory as well. Food buffs do stack those, so make sure to make use of this when you can, especially for PvP. And as for the furniture shop, so early on you do get furniture for free to place in your house, however if you do want access to even more, you can come to this bench to begin crafting the baseline stuff until you reach the higher tiers. Speaking of which, to upgrade the benches you have to be at a certain level of that specific craft, so you can't upgrade your armor bench to tier 2 for instance until you get to armorsmith grade 8 for instance. 
When you do craft furniture at this bench, it does not cost materials it seems, but it does cost labor and time. Not only can you craft furniture that can be placed on the inside of your houses, but you can also decorate the entirety of the outside with all sorts of things such as lights, fences, tents, and even ponds and trees, and anything in between. You can also customize just about every aspect of your house visually. You can change the texture and color of the outer roof, the wallpaper on the inside, the wall on the outside, the foundations, the ceiling, and even the floor tiles. The sky's the limit with the customization you have here. You'll have to upgrade this furniture shop that follows the same system as the others to be able to get access to more choices. The materials required for upgrading this stuff does increase as you go up in the levels and some of them, unlike the storage, require a different housing item which does need to be purchased from the token vendor. To get the tokens themselves from the residence vendor, there is a delivery merchant right beside him that you can deliver materials and refine resources to, as well as cook food and magic crystals for it too. I highly recommend trying to do this at the start of the day as well because you have access to urgent deliveries, which also give you 5 tokens instead of the ones like normal. But they are limited time offers and can be changed via paying gold by clicking the swirl icon, just in case you don't have what it's asking for. You can also pay the tax on the house and see how long you have before the next payment by clicking on the pay tax rate in the top left. And lastly, there will be an automaton NPC that you'll have access to from the get-go. And for this one, when you get your estate to level 2, you'll be able to begin crafting these combat pets to bring into battle with you via that automaton workshop. You may notice that after 30, you start to kill mobs dropping glowing orbs called automaton parts. You'll also notice yourself getting these random hidden auto raptor automatons or raptor automatons. Tier 1 as time goes on as well as a bunch of different chests for them. The raptors are the ground-based combat pets and the bats are the flying ones. With the workshop, you're able to use the baseline raptor automaton item, not the engine or the tail, and start the process. You want to then place the tail and an engine on it to start constructing the battle pet, however as the tiers go up, it does take more time to complete. The vendor that's outside your house can also sell you the tail or the engine or even the automaton chest to get the base item, but you need to know that the tiers can be expensive as they go up. To counter this, there is a button you can click while talking to an NPC to exchange all the unused automaton parts and base items in your inventory, but make sure to have the ones you want to keep in the house bank before you do this. So do the exchange to trash the unwanted ones and you'll get the automaton part chest that will give you more to use towards buying what you need. You can also buy the parts to craft a defense automaton or an attack based one and both are extremely useful for all situations. Tanks and DPS. The tiers go from tier 1 to tier 8 and you need to match the parts with the proper base item so be sure to keep note of that too. After that's all done you'll have your very own automaton. And oh don't forget that when you have these out they actually are on a timer and it does start taking down depending on which tier of these you have, which you can check by pressing the bracket icon or opening the automaton menu. However you can pause the timer by desummoning the pet after you're done with it in combat so be sure to make use of this as long as it lasts. On top of that as well be sure to note that if your pet actually does die in the open world it will be auto destroyed no matter the timer. So if it's getting low make sure to desummon it before it's too late. For last tips don't forget to set up your merchant NPCs blacksmiths, and enchantment NPCs if you can hire them. If you live far away from towns, these will be very beneficial to use, but careful with them as they do increase the tax payment though. And placing your house in areas you'll most likely be grinding in is very useful due to the bonuses it gives. And with that folks, that is the complete and in-depth housing system. If I missed anything at all, be sure to leave it in the comments below and thank you all very very much for watching as well. And farewell.